previously in Finero. God can only give and operate with you to the level you have adopted in the spirit. According to how much strength you have in the inner man to believe. Paul makes a very wonderful prayer for the church. He says, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. He's praying for the man that is not seen. He's speaking of a strengthening that every man needs because Paul knows what it means for one's inner man to be strengthened with dunamis. Much as we carry that power, some people are not strengthened in the same. They are not energized in the same. Some people are not charged in the same. Now, John chapter 6 story is that when people start to see signs, miracles, and wonders, they say, you know what? Let's follow this fellow. Let's go after him. Let's chase him after. And when they follow him, the Bible says he lifts up his eyes and sees a great company come unto him. There were very many. The Bible tells us he turns to Philip and then he asks Philip a question. How are we going to feed these guys? Jesus is not asking Philip a question because he does not know what to do. Jesus already knew what he would do. But the Bible says he did this to prove Philip. The message version said he said this to stretch Philip's faith. He knew what to do. But he's walking with Philip and he's like, I need to stretch this fellow's faith. And the Bible says, Philip answered, 200 silver pieces wouldn't be enough to buy bread for each person to get a piece. Listen to the answer Philip says. Jesus is not asking him based on what is available. Jesus is trying to stretch this man's faith. If Philip told God, I think you can call food from heaven, Jesus would have done it. The next verse says, One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, There is a lad here which has five barley of loaves and two small fish. Andrew brought another proposition. Two fish and five loaves of bread. He said, okay, if you have fish and loaves of bread, bring them. And scripture is clear, he gives thanks and everybody eats. What if the proposition was one loaf of bread? Would Jesus perform? What if there was no fish and bread? Would Jesus perform? Now I want to give you two scenarios in scripture that I want you to think about very keenly. A story is given in Matthew 25 verses 14. And it says, The kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, two called his own servants, and delivered unto them his goods. One he gave five talents, to another two talents, and to another one. To every man, the Bible says, according to his several ability personal strength of the inner man by the holy spirit he gave one man five talents because there was an ability in his spirit that could contain and manage five talents and then he gave one man one talent because he looks at him and he says hmm, this guy's strength in the spirit cannot contain two or three talents god does not give more than you are adopted to in the spirit how much are you adopted to even though you're asking you're asking for money but how much can your spirit contain you're asking for a job but how big can your spirit accommodate you're asking for a ministry but how big can your spirit accommodate you're asking for a marriage how can your spirit accommodate it? what are we asking for how steady how composed, how adopted is your spirit? How much strength is within your spirit to sustain what you're asking for? And sometimes answered prayer comes to the level of your adoption. Then the Bible says, He that received the five talents went and traded with the same and met them other five talents because it was in him to multiply five. And the Bible says, And likewise, he that had received two he also gained other two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And so he that had received five talents came and saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few. Even the, the five was few. You might think God was going to use a language like you have been faithful 
in the most talents that I've given among us the three. No, to God this was still few. And he says, I will make thee ruler over many things. In other words, I'm going to increase that strength in you over many things. And then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strewed. And his Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked, you know. What is on me will reap where it has not sown and will gather where it has not strode. Even if you had gotten this money and given it to somebody exchanging money, you'd still make profit. Because that's how God functions. God is not limited by economies. He's not limited by your color. He's not limited by the nation that you're in. He's not limited by the connections you have or those that you don't have. He is not limited. And the Bible says in the next verse, Take the thousand and give it to the one who risked the most. And get rid of this, play it safe. Who won't go out on a limb? Sometimes when it comes to the places of believing God, you risk. You just have to close your eyes and say, eh. But you must stretch your faith. It is godly for God to stretch you. Always be walking on the edge of risk takers. Don't be in the, the guys who play itself. No. Always walk on the line of risk takers. That's where Jesus is. I choose to believe God a certain way. In Luke chapter 19 verses 11, a similar story comes up. But this time, he's dealing with men who had similar ability. A certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy until I come. Now he gave each ten, meaning that they all had the same ability to contain it. When he was returned, he commanded his servants to be called unto him, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound has gained ten pounds. Then the second came saying, Lord, thy pound has gained five pounds. And another came saying, Lord, Behold, there is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. <laughs> Another one. Then he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required my own with usury? And he said unto them, that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him. Again, he gives to the highest. Then I learned that firstly, I have to deal with the strength of my spirit. God will entrust me according to my ability of adaption. And he knows the spirit that is adapted to such accommodation will multiply what has been given. And if I understand that, I'll always be like that. That's how the kingdom of God works. And for more of this, join us every Thursday at Umalugogo from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Finero, make manifest.